Today we're going to take these seemingly drab, boring, thrifted finds and we're going to give them a new life using IOD transfers, molds, and stamps. So we're going to start with the IOD transfer traditional pots and it comes with two sheets of black transfers, one sheet of white, and one sheet of a gorgeous indigo blue. So we're going to take this white teapot and we're going to use one of these indigo blue transfers to give it a little bit of juice, pizzazz, interesting look other than this boring white. And I know a lot of you love just the traditional white and that's okay. You can turn it the other way because we're only going to put a transfer on one side. So the challenges that we have here are figuring out what fits in the size because not only are we round from right to left, we're round from top to bottom. So looking at the size of the transfer is really important to figure out you know what is going to be able to go on there with the least amount of cracking or um, stacking up on top of itself so one of the really great things about all of these transfers is that you can cut them into pieces so that if it's easier to actually apply them in pieces rather than the whole picture and you don't even have to use the whole picture so what I'm doing here, and I'm sorry, I'm off camera. I moved where I had my camera and I keep getting down there off of it. But I'm looking to see how it's gonna fit and where it's gonna fit and how much of the transfer can I get on there. So once I decide where I actually wanna put it, what I'm doing over here, and you just have to take my word for it, there you go. I'm actually cutting the transfer and creating little slits all around the edge so that when I curve it, again, both right to left and top to bottom, that is going to allow it to bend without causing it to overlap. And if you've ever, um, if you are a seamstress or a tailor, then you know when you go around corners that you score and slice, put slits in the corner of your fabric so that it will make that corner easier. I'm using that same philosophy here with these round items. So what I do is I just hold it really tightly in the middle and I did cut, you know, that plastic cover off as I went just so that I, it would be out of the way. But I'm holding it with my thumb very tightly and then I'm working from side to side, doing a little bit, turning it and doing a little bit more just to make sure that it doesn't slide. You can tape them and technically that is the best practice, but because these are so narrow, um, top to bottom, if I taped it, then the tape would just be in the way. So I went ahead and put them all in. And again, I put them in pieces. But look at that. Oh, I love that indigo blue traditional pots transfer. So these cheese crocs are all the rage. Um, and they come in such cool colors. And I'm going to use one of these white transfers because it'll really pop on that brown. But it's very difficult to see them when you're just looking at that white on white. So I'm looking at the back where you can see what they are. I'm trying to figure out which ones I have left. And I love the one with the birds. So I'm figuring out that's I have the bottom corner of that sheet left. And I want to use the birds, but it is too big for my space. So not that there was going to be a bad decision because I really love them all, but I went with the one that best fit on the crock that I had. So I'm cutting the words off of the top and I'm going to put the bottom part on first. So I'm just going to uh, do the same thing where I cut off the extra and then put those little slits in there so that it'll wrap around there better and I won't have any issues with that. So I try to get it centered in between the two sides there. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to press all over, get it a little bit stuck, and then I will start working on some specifics. These really detailed ones are great, except that that's more pieces to not stick. So you really have to be careful and pick up very carefully to make sure that they're all on there. So I really love how this one turned out. This last little pot, apparently I lost the footage, so you'll just have to wait and see in the end which one I used.
It's very tiny, so I didn't have very many choices. So here we have a galvanized bucket. I picked this up. Um, I got this at Goodwill. It was $1.99, and I had a coupon, so it actually cost me $1.49. It was originally $4.99 at Old Time Pottery. Um, and I love these for planners. And then here I have this old wood toolbox, and it's pretty beat up. It's got some pieces missing. Long story, but we had a pet squirrel who uh, pulled on it, and he tore it up. Um, he has since been released into to the wild and is a happy uh, boy out there in the world. So we're going to use these IOD molds and we're going to use the IOD clay and we are going to make some flowers for the wood tool caddy and I'm going to use the wonderful little pig and flowers for my galvanized planter. There are lots of different types of clay. Other people like to use some of the other brands of air-dried clay, but I really like the IOD, and that is what I'm going to use. I'm putting cornstarch in the mold. Uh, that is because it helps the clay release better. So I'm going to put it in both the different flower ones and all in the pig and the little crevices to make sure everything comes out. I'm going to shake it and get the extra out because you don't want so much cornstarch that your clay gets kind of icky. You want to make sure that... Um, it's still, you're not going to have cornstarch necessarily in your clay. So I'm going to work it around in my hands, and then I'm going to go ahead and make my flowers first. The thing about these IOD molds is they have that micro rim around it, so I will just push the clay as I go and then push it off the edge, and because of that rim, it just pretty much cuts your clay so that you have a perfect edge every time. So I just, I'm pressing down and kind of stretching the clay out to the edge and I'm gonna make sure once I know that everything is completely where it needs to be, then I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm just gonna kind of roll it out of there. So if you just kind of roll it back, other people with other types of clay, say you can put them in the freezer, there's all kinds of things that you can do. But I have not had any trouble with the IOD clay. Look at those. Those IOD molds have such wonderful um, patterns and design and details. So now I'm going to figure out the layout. So these are still wet. Uh, I don't ever wait for them to dry before I use them. They are a lot easier to mold and glue on when they are still damp. So here I'm just kind of figuring out where I want to put it, making sure that I have the design before I start gluing. I'm going to use Eileen's Tacky Glue. I, you know, you can use all different kinds of things. I, I use Tight Bond, I use Gorilla Wood Glue, but this is what was handy, and so that's what I'm using. And I'm making sure that I go into all the little details, the feet, the tail, the ears, and I'm going to put it on the edge and then use my finger and spread it out and make sure that I'm going out to all those little edges so that every one of those little pieces that could break off are glued down very well. I'm going to press it down, but I want to be careful not to press out the detail or to create a big fingerprint. So I'm just kind of looking, making sure it's where I want it. And then I'm going to add this um, blue painter's tape and hold them in place while that glue has an opportunity to dry. So the glue is probably dry. The mold is still a little bit soft. It's not completely dry and it is okay because we're gonna go ahead and paint it and that is totally okay to do while it is still wet. I actually like to do that. Sometimes it um, makes a difference and keeps it from cracking. Um, as this clay dries, it has a little bit of crackage. So you want, um, when you paint it, I think sometimes it helps to keep it from doing that. So anyway, I'm just pressing it down, making sure everything is really stuck. And I am using, this is, um, let's see, Farm Girl, uh, I think. Uh, I will put all the products that I use in the description of the video. Fancy Farm Girl, that's what it is. So this is DIY brand paint, Debbie's Design Diary DIY brand paint, and it is a clay-based paint, and I absolutely love this color. Green is my favorite color, so there are so many wonderful greens in this DIY brand paint. I start out, I'm really careful. I am just using a chip brush. I had a bunch of them, so that's what I grabbed. And I can pounce it down in between its feet and all around the flowers and make sure that I really get it in there. And I'm carefully making sure I don't get it on the edge. And then by the time I get to the second coat, so you, you know, you can see here, I'm just putting a second coat. 
I get pain on my hand and I touch the handle and then I drop it and I get pain on the handle and by then I'm just like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to paint the whole thing. Uh, no more trying to be careful. I, you know, part of why I got this bucket was I love these little wood handles, but that's okay. It looks amazing in the end. Trust me, I will show you when I'm finished. But I did go ahead and say, let's just paint it all. And so I used two coats uh, just to make sure that everything was covered really well. And one of the great things about this clay-based paint, it is water-based and it just washes off. So since my being careful did not work out very well, I just took some uh, wet cleaning wipes and cleaned the bottom. See? Voila, like it never even happened. And I'm going to do the same thing um, around the edges around the top. So I had very carefully made sure that I didn't get paint anywhere and then, yeah, gave up. But I also used my little finger sander here to sand down some ridges where that handle was up against the rim of the planner. It had kind of a little blob of paint. So I'm just sanding it down, making sure that it's very smooth and that there's no bumps and it doesn't really show paintbrush marks too bad. And then I use my uh, cleaning wipe there and I just distress it back a little bit. I do that on both the handles and they that way you can still see that there's wood. So I am using the Debbie's Design Diary DIY Wax in the color white. I am not using a clear or any kind of sealant underneath it. I am just going to use my stencil brush which is a little hard because I only wash them out about once a year. And so I'm just going to dip it right in there. And I will tell you that, um, you know, again, following directions that you would do well to get some paint or I'm sorry, some wax on, um, you know, paper plate, your parchment paper, whatever you're using, because I am getting a little bit of green on here. So when I dip it back in, so I'm just carefully making sure that I dip and scoop and that way I don't leave any green in there so that the next time I'm white waxing something, it has green. But I'm going to cover everything. I'm going to go smooth in one direction so that it catches, um, it doesn't create any additional marks. And then I am taking a lint-free cloth, which is aka a linen dish towel that had gotten nasty, and I cut up into pieces to use for rags. So leaving no, no lint in my wax, but I'm getting that excess. So you can see there where it's kind of sticking in the paintbrush strokes from where I put that green on there. See, I just get a big old blob. That way I don't have to worry about leaving green in my paint bucket. And now I'm going to just dab it down in, making sure that I'm getting it everywhere, including the handles. And I want to get all up in there because the surface is what you're going to wipe off. So you want to make sure that what you're leaving in there is actually leaving it in, the, um, in between the feet, the ears, and all of that. So once that wax has had an opportunity to kind of cure, then I'm taking this buffer brush and giving it a good rough scrub and it helps to shine up that wax and make everything look new and fresh. Not enough that it looks like I've taken a glossy cover to it, but just enough that it doesn't have quite the dull luster that it had. So I really absolutely love the new look of this piece and I can't wait for you to see it in the end. All right, so we have made all of the molds. We've used our flower mold and made all these flowers the same way we made our pig and our flowers. And now I'm just kind of laying them out on this little toolbox to see how I want to have them. And I did do both sides. So I've made, you know, two of each of the flowers and then four of the leaves. So now I've kind of figured it out a little bit and I'm going to take that same Aileen's uh, tacky glue and I'm going to do that same piece where I want to get over to the edge on each of them. I tend to have a knack of actually using too much glue and sometimes it squishes out underneath it so you know you want to make sure that you get enough but not too much. So I'm going to then take my finger and just smear that in there. One of these days I'm going to have enough sense to make all my molds and then glue them all on after the fact because I always end up with a gluey clay mess on all my fingers. But uh, this um it's really important anyway it's worth it because you want to make sure that you get all that glue on there because you the worst thing you can think of is to sell a piece to somebody and they've had it a week and put it uh, wherever they're going to display it and your molds fall off so you want to make sure that you get it on there really well 
and I'm not even sure that that is where I had it to start with or the exact look, but uh, you know, you get the gist of it. I'm going to overlap them and glue everything down, and then I'm going to use this Debbie's Design Diary DIY brand paint in the color White Swan. It's just a beautiful, clean white. It looks a lot like the color of the clay, so you, you can see here, you, you can't even really tell that I'm painting it, but I'm painting everywhere because I want to make sure everything is exactly the same. And Again, I'm using a chip brush because I'm actually using the same chip brush that I used. I just washed the green out. And it seemed like a good idea because I was doing it on this rough paint. Or I'm sorry, rough wood that's all chippy. But I have to constantly stop and get all the loose hairs out of my brush. Um, but, you know, that's how it goes. So everything gets a good coat. I'm not going to actually do the inside. I wanted to just leave that regular raw looking wood. I am going to wax it so it isn't raw, but I'm only going to paint the outside and then I'm going to paint that top lip there. So I'll give it a good uh, paint and just carefully, since my chip brush is not exactly a detail brush, I'm going to just do the best I can to get it in there. Oh my. So, um, yeah, I should have thought this through. Raw wood, major bleed through. So I am out here in the shop. I'm going to use some clear matte Rust-Oleum spray paint. I'm going to give it two coats, including the bottom, uh, which I didn't show you painting. And see, look, once I paint it, look at all that bleed through. Um, I do actually paint the bottom and the underneath of it, but once I gave it those two coats of that spray paint and then I go through and give everything another coat, it covers beautifully and no more bleed through. Um, had I thought through in the beginning and used something like the DIY's brand Salvation Solution, it comes in a white or a clear and that helps to prevent that bleed through, but I didn't and that's why I just took it out and sprayed it real quickly. Um, but just kind of using that chip brush to make sure I get down in there so there's not any place in all the edges. So I'm going to use my little finger sander and I'm using a rough, I'm actually using a 60 grit sand strip here. And I'm going to go in on all these edges where it was, um, where the pieces were ripped off, where the squirrel Mateo ate the edges of it. Uh, I used to have this actually sitting on the coffee table and so therefore he would sit there and pull pieces off. But I'm just going around the edges and getting that so it looks a little bit more natural and it doesn't look like a freshly painted box. So where you can obviously see that it was worn, I'm going to make the paint match the actual style. So again, using that rough sand and sandpaper and just getting it down in there you can see I'm getting kind of some pieces down in where it's wood so we'll spray that all out and get that cleaned out uh, careful not to do the flowers because of course obviously they're white underneath so there's nothing there to distress to uh, where I got paint on the inside edge I'm still using that 60 grit and I just sand that off around there so that I don't have to actually try to wash that off and it looks when I use the wax inside it just cleans that all up and you can't even see anymore where I had paint on the edge. So here I am going to use the DIY clear wax. I rather than um, just going straight in with my dark wax I want to use the clear wax. I am using the same brush so there's a little bit of white and a little bit of green that get in there but totally doesn't hurt it at all actually kind of makes it neat. Same thing um, the best thing to do is scoop out some of your clear wax onto a, you know, a paper plate or a, a plate in general and not dip your brush right back into your clear wax, but do as I say, not as I do. And I'm just going to cover everything real well with that clear so that when I go back in with dark wax, it will um, give me a little bit of movement and a little bit of control. You don't have to do that, but I wanted to do that because I didn't want to just make everything so dark. I wanted to be able to do it. So I get the wax on and then I move in long strokes to kind of even it out. And I'm going to take my rag, again, my dish towel that I've cut up, not the same piece. I did at least use a different piece. And I'm just going to wipe off that excess because I don't want chunks of wax on there. I just want to make sure that everything has a good cover before I start using the dark wax. So here I am. This was, oops, upside down. There we go. This is Kills Dark Wax. And uh, it was just the first one that I found. I know I'm not the most organized of crafters. So um, when I decide to do something, sometimes it's just whatever happens to be on top. But I am using just a little disposable detailed brush and I'm going to put it down inside all the little grooves. 
just like with the planter with the pig, when we're wiping it back, we're wiping it off the top and we wanna make sure the wax is down inside the details. So I'm not even worried about making sure that I get wax absolutely everywhere because there's gonna be enough on the rag that it'll kind of get everywhere else and I'm just wanting it to get in those, you know, in, in all the little nooks and crannies that are in there and making sure that there's no real bright white places and giving this a wonderful aged look. But, you know, the, the reason you use that clear wax and what's really awesome about it and just still, you know, using um, the same brush, you'll see me in a little bit where I'll actually grab that um, clear wax and it acts kind of as an eraser. So if you get too much and you think, oh my gosh, what have I done? You can always use that clear wax. So I'm going to get in here and um, you see there's what I'm showing you there is it had a little bit of um, a white spot that you could see where I hadn't any wax and that was kind of glaring bright white. So, you know, you just want to make sure you get in all the little details before you um, take your rag and wipe off your extra. I love the way this white swan looks with this dark wax over it. And there's there's dark waxes that come in a brown, they come in a black. So you just kind of pick what, you know, what's your flavor? You know, which one do you like the most? And I my favorite part is the way it looks on this leaf. So I'm making sure to get into all that detail, getting around all the edges. And the great thing about this brush is that it really doesn't matter if I'm cramming it in there, what condition the brush is in. I bought like a thousand of them at a yard sale. I mean, literally, no joke. And so... Um, I'll tend to use them two or three times and then I'll just trash them. Um, but here I'll start wiping it away and then I realize that it's not coming off as much as I want it to. And so I'm going to grab my clear wax brush and well, my okay, white wax brush. But anyway, I'm going to grab the other wax brush and I'm just going to take it in there and kind of erase some of that so that it still has that wonderful detail, but not quite so, um, not quite so dark. You know, I mean, I want it to look aged, but not dirty. I mean, even though it was actually a toolbox at one time, when I bought it at the auction, it actually had nuts and bolts in it. Um, but I wanted it for decor, not for actual storage. All right, our last item, but definitely not least, is this basket. We're going to take this. This I uh, did a white brush um, on it and I didn't like the natural looking kind of weird I don't know it's just I'm not a big fan of the natural looking baskets so I did a whitewash on it but it needs something it just looks a little boring with that giant in there that giant white space so I'm using the ocean blue DIY no I'm sorry IOD um, using the IOD ink oh what's happening to my brain here and then I, this is actually literally left from a grain sack and I'm going to use the part down here that doesn't have the letters. I'll save the part with the letters on a different project. And I'm going to take this part, figure out what size I need. And I have taken that ink. It was a new bottle of ink and I had a new pad and I put it all in there and I'm going to let that sit there. It's, it's sitting up there soaking into that pad while I am taking this and I'm just going to tear little strings off the edge so that it looks rough all over since I had a fresh cut. And you can also rip it so that it gives a little bit rush, rough edge, but I knew that I was gonna do this. I just went ahead and cut it with my scissors. I kind of trim it up a little bit so that my pieces are all a little bit, um, you know, they, they look rough, but they're it's a straight edge, if you will. But again, you can just pull these strings out and it gives it that frayed edge on the sides. So once I do that, I'm using the Kindest Regards IOD, Kindest Regards stamp, and I'm going to use my Oceans ink here, and I'm gonna just ink up um, part of the stamp, because of course, you know, I know that my little piece of fabric isn't that big. And so then I'm gonna just I'm line it up so at least it's straight. And then I push it down. I hold it with one hand. I really, you know, you always want to make sure to hold it with one hand while you work with the other because you don't want your stamp to slide because then it will make it so it's not as clear. And I do try to clean them up from the look of the stamp. You can see that I haven't always, but I try to clean my stamps really well because if you get gunk down in there, then it's not as clear. But see how great that turned out? Oh my gosh. 
So now I just felt like it needed something. This would have been really great with maybe like a vintage brooch hooked onto it or maybe a button. But what I did was find a sunflower, or sunflower, oh my gosh, see, seriously, it's well past my bedtime, a dragonfly stamp. I don't know which uh, pattern that actually came off of, but I wanted to use the same color. I didn't want a contrasting color, and I just stamped that right over the top to add a look, little extra love. I'm going to still use the same glue. I'm going to put dots all over it and then smear it in. And I go really well around the outside edge because I don't want it to peel up. But also it will help to keep it from fraying anymore because I kind of take that glue out into the fray so that it still looks frayed, but it won't continue to get any worse. And then I'm going to push it down. And here you go. Here are the finished products. So let me know. See, look, there's the little bean pot with the cute little uh, transfer in there. See, told you you could see it in the end. Let me know which one was your favorite. Do you have items in your decor or thrifted items that could use a little drab to fab with IOD or other items? Let me know. I really love how these all turned out and I hope that you enjoyed watching this. If you are not already a subscriber of my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.